Hello everybody, I'm Count Christo. This is Imperator Rome, and about a week ago or so, I extolled you all to try the game. And I hope you did. I hope you enjoyed it. And I think there are things about it which are good. Uh, but I also think there are things about it which are bad. And I'm going to uh, cover some of those very briefly. So this is more or less the final state, probably, of Imperator Rome. Various things have been fixed. Uh, some things haven't. And uh, I want to speak just briefly, just because I've been thinking about them. Not because I have any, you know hatred of the game. I think it's in some ways it's, it's quite good fun. Um, but my overriding feeling playing this game is why would I play this when I could play EU4? Basically, I think it's worse than EU4 in a lot of a lot of ways. And that's not surprising given the amount of development time sunk into each. Um, but it just is the case. And games need to, you know, they compete with, with other, ga other similar games. So uh, this game fails to do that in my estimation is basically my, uh, my theory. Uh, but first off, some of the good things. Uh, stability is very cool. Training equilibriums. Love those. Um, I think the, the way that tech works is kind of interesting. Um, it is, to me, pretty uh, gamily. It makes sense. Um, but the fact that your um, slaves contribute far more to your economy than freemen do um, is weird. <laughs> like, that's not uh, that's not really very coherent <laughs> from a kind of understanding of how consumer economies work um but maybe rome wasn't one and i'm just not well enough informed about how that works which is fair i mean the culture system is pretty cool religion system is pretty cool uh the wonder system the province system many things about it are good uh you've probably seen a number of videos if you've been watching them recently talking about all the things that are good so i'll think about talk about some of the things that aren't um one of the main ways that you influence various systems is by uh using province policies like these when a new governor comes in or when you lose control of a province and then regain control of that province let's say it revolts for example uh, they reset the policy and then you have to change it back and it costs resources to change it back political influence specifically which is a good resource that is well managed and sensible and i like it but that is very annoying like i want to as you can see i want to culturally convert like all of southern italy right now so every time I get a new governor, I have to go in here and I have to change this. Very repetitive. Most of my complaints, I think, about this are things that are simply repetitive. Next is the character stuff, which is also very repetitive. So right now, we're, you know, relatively small Rome. I have one, two, three, four, five, six governors. Every time one of those dies, I have to select a new one. I have eight officers. Every time one of those dies, I have to select a new one. And I have four tech researchers every time one of those dies i have to select another one here is how you choose a marshall advances researcher guy uh, step one do you have a scorned family that's a family who doesn't have enough jobs if no pick the guy with the highest stats or a trait thus ends the thought process if you have a scorned family so let's say for example you no you well i'm not gonna, i'm not going to show you it exactly but when you have a uh, you have your families they need a certain number of jobs if they don't they get scorned which gives big penalties and uh, so you generally want them to not be scorned so every so often a family becomes scorned because new jobs have arrived and they feel like their share of jobs is unfair and you have to deal with that every so often one of these guys dies and you have to replace them every so often one of these guys dies and you have to replace them. Every so often, one of these guys dies and you have to replace them. And do you know when else you interact with these characters? Um, when they're disloyal. If they are in one of those posts or leading one of your armies, likewise, if you have, you know, how many armies you have, you've got to keep people in charge of them and however many navies you have, ideally you want to be keeping people in charge of them. And every time any of those people die, you have to replace them. And any time any of those people become disloyal, you have to uh, try and make them loyal again. And here is the system by which you make people loyal. You either make friends with them, you bribe them, you give them free hands. That's about it. Um, so the, the system is trying to be a kind of CK light, basically. That's my impression of it anyway. And it succeeds in you know having some characters and they have stats and they have traits and things like that. And it completely fails because by necessarily cutting out a lot of the ways in which you would want to interact with those people from CK. Because if you had all the CK interactions between all these people, it would be very, very, well, it would be a very different game, basically. 
Um, but without those systems, there aren't interesting ways to make people loyal. And there aren't interesting ways to um, increase the stats of people. And there aren't interesting ways to, um, you know, foster power and, and, and foster, foster like high stat people. There's no, um, you know, there, there are marriages, but there's no kind of particularly sophisticated marriage system. You can game it such that you have someone who's descended from like all the fancy people that have ever lived. But anyway, so it really, the character system feels like it's obviously a lot of work has gone into it. So I don't say this to deny that, but it feels tacked on in that you could take it away and the game wouldn't get worse basically you know i can i can i can conceive of better ways of doing almost every element of the character system and i see that the character system is obviously deeply ingrained in the game and also deeply ingrained in the concept of a a kind of ancient or classical era um game where you know the loyalty of people and civil wars and things was vital but when the meaningful ways that I can interact with this guy is, do you want to make him more corrupt, but more loyal? Do you want to bribe him? Or do you want to make friends with him? These are the realistic ways I can make him loyal. Um, I could make him a rival. I don't know why you would ever do that. I think maybe it makes it easier to remove him, possibly, like it would give me events to help me remove him. But uh, there's all kinds of things that just realistically, why would you do them? That you don't, you don't interact with these things. Um, at least I haven't found any reason to interact with these things in whatever, like 100 hours or something. Um, so the, the character system boils down, for me anyway, to an alert pops up saying your researcher died. You go in here, you click this, and you go, oh, I need a new researcher. Okay, there you go. Done. That's not fun. That's not engaging. That's just busy work. And it happens once every kind of four minutes for the whole game. So it's it really doesn't doesn't add anything. Next, um, there, yeah, there's lots of ways in which the game is obviously has a worse user experience than EU4. Um, controlling armies is one of them. Selecting armies versus navies um, is another. Uh, being able to... There are, to be clear, there are cool things that the army do, do, does that EU4 does not, and I think those deserve credit. But I'm just talking... I'm talking mostly about the reasons why I'm about to stop playing this game again, basically. It was worth going back to, and I enjoyed going back to it, but I'm about to go and mod mayo and taxes to try and try and finally get privileges working instead <laughs> um province views and things they've they've come a hugely long way it's also worth noting i played this game only recently with the invictus mod it's possible some of these problems are added by it i don't think they are i think they're actually made less bad by it but uh trade trade is a really mechanically interesting system mechanically interesting system provinces create one good which means it's very easy to kind of comprehend what's going on the more slaves they have plus buildings and modifiers the more units of that good they create if they create an excess of it you can shuffle it around in trade and what all of the guides suggest you do and i'm not disagreeing is that you basically accept all trades but don't let them take um take away from capital bonuses when automatically trading and then you go to your capital and you try and maximize the number of bonuses you can get here and you can see that even just this much um, and this feeds into another problem that I'll talk to in a minute, but even just owning this much of the world, um, I can get most of the bonuses, certainly all the bonuses that I think look any good, really. Um, so what happens with this? Like, what is the interesting, once you've done that, you know, getting to that state, there are kind of interesting ways that you build up the uh, this, like you, you, know, you build port infrastructure, you do events, you, um, you make investments, things like that. What, what is the actual gameplay loop when you have a bonus established? Well, if you're trading with it from some other province, then every time that province changes hands or every time the province owner starts to dislike you, you have to redo it. You have to every, you know, again, once every couple of minutes, you will, I will see trading slot empty and one of these will have gone away and the game won't tell me which I have to look through and establish which it is. And then I go in, I click on it and I import it. And I do not care who I import it from because the AI is not a meaningful threat. And I, I'm playing Rome, so it's not very surprising. But, uh, you know, so you don't care who you're importing it from. You click a button and you do that once every four or so minutes. Too much of the game is busy work. Like nothing, nothing is really meaningfully happening um, in order to, uh, to feed this trade system once you have it set up, which I dislike. The other thing is this is speed five. We are 
what? Is this 100 years into the game? I can't remember when the game starts. Maybe 120 years into the game, something like that. This is speed five. Johan said on the forum the other day that um, Imperator has a pop system and it runs really well. Um, I, I think I'm remembering that was what he said. He might have said the opposite, in which case I apologize, but it doesn't. It runs badly. Um, and I really don't like the, the performance element of it. Um, I imagine if you cut out India, you might be able to make it perform better, which uh, certainly doesn't feel relevant to any Rome campaigns or Carthaginian campaigns, things like that. But yeah, it runs pretty badly, which is annoying. Um, what else did I write down? Yeah, so two other things. One is I've conquered this much land, right? I have all the trade goods I want. I have uh, vastly stronger armies than anybody I have cared to encounter. Um, you can stack bonuses to a quite kind of ridiculous degree. And uh, I've never heard of any of these people. So I really, I mean, I've heard of Carthage, obviously, but of the people that I would like be looking to fight in the immediate future, everyone in this box, like Helvetica, you know, them of the font or whatever, Pictorina, Pictoria, whatever. I assume those are the picks that ended up in Scotland. Um, Brigantia, I think I have heard of. Caledonia, you know, I, I like their ferries. But I have heard it said <laughs> that those saying people don't know, and I mean, I don't want to subtweet. I heard this said by uh, someone called Liana. Liliana? Liana? I forget her name. I forget her, her new username. Um, but she was saying that the... Um, People said that this game didn't work because of the era, because people don't know about this era, and that that's a fixable problem and that Paradox should have fixed it. And I think that is, um, well, I don't agree. <laughs> it's the politest way to put it. Uh, it's just not reali realistic that Paradox is going to teach me to care, learn about and then care about Helvia. Like this, it's simply not going to happen. Um, these are all incredibly border gourd road bumps which present no significant challenge as you steamroll over them um, with your wildly better pop management so there and, and it's and it really is border gourd central like this game and ck2 and the earlier start dates has the same problem which is it's all these irrelevant countries that you haven't heard of and don't care about with horrendous border gourd that you just steamroll through and conquer them all and that's way, way less engaging. Like the rivalry with Carthage is interesting and fun. Um, but once you've done that, it's like, okay, I guess I'll go fight Egypt. I don't really feel like I have a need to because I don't need a bread basket. I can build tall and create stupid amounts of food all the way, I, or, you know, without needing it. But it, it becomes a map painting for map painting's sake game much, much faster than something like uh, EU4. CK2 and 3 suffer this problem as well, um, but they have the really in-depth internal stuff, which can stay interesting much longer, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, those are the reasons... I told you the other day that you should try Imperator Rome, and that's true. These are the reasons why you shouldn't mourn its departure too much, because <laughs> it has a lot of problems. Um, and obviously, if you want to mourn its departure, that's, that's totally fine. I'm not telling you not to. Um, but let this warm your heart a little, perhaps, because uh, the game's repetitive. The game's repetitive and kind of bad, and a few things, but it has a lot of really cool things as well, which, again, I haven't gone into hugely here, but just to give one example, for example, the distinction between one example, the difference between legions and uh, levies, which work kind of like um, the better army system in CK2 compared to CK3, where you have... Um, always on the map retinues and then levies that you raise is really good fun and it's tied to your pops in different regions and the people that they raise are governors which is a really cool idea you can't replace a governor when they're leading their army i wish that was a thing in um tk3 where you had like individual armies being raised from individual like sub kingdoms and things i think that would be a really cool mechanic to actually make you care about these people's stats um I think it works really well. I think the tech system is good, the way you have just like tech levels here and then also inventions. Um, the bonuses that tech levels give you, I think could be more interesting. Um, there could be more kind of break points within them, but that's, you know, neither here nor there. Many systems, many systems I think work well. Um, but those are the things that I don't think work that well. And I'm gonna go and get back to my own taxes. Who knows, maybe one day we will succeed. I will succeed in, in playing some small role in getting 
privileges back in so I can play EU4 again. <laughs> but until then, thanks so much for watching.